<laughs> Hi, I'm Kelly from the Royal Bee Yarn Company. And I'm Tony, Kelly's husband, who's also from the Royal Bee Yarn Company. And this is episode six, and I'm also a teacher. Yep, here in Pacifica, where we have our little shop, and we also have our own yarn brand. I we'll, forgot to I forgot to get like yarn brand props, but thankfully we'll, I have it right um, right behind me. So we have our own yarn brand, which is um, the Royal Bee Yarn Company Purple Couch Collection, which we named after a whole bunch of folks that have helped us along the way, part of our stitch group. It um, comes from a little farm here in the United States, the Fleece, and then it's milled nearby and hand dyed with all natural dyes. So it's really environmentally friendly and very squishy. Mm. Want to give it a squish? Yep, token squish. Token squish. Upside down. <laughs> hey. Yeah, it's very squishy, very soft. Yeah. And uh, mm, it smells very nice too. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's us. What a gorgeous day today, Cal. It it's is a stunning I think, day. I think spring is here. Spring I wish I could tilt sprung. the camera because I know I'll knock the camera off or something. <laughs> but the, the, the skies are blue. You can see the ocean twinkling yep. in the distance. That's the Pacific yep. Ocean, if you don't know where we are. <laughs> We're right next to the Pacific Ocean. Just, it's just like a like, little peekaboo, a peekaboo view. Yeah. You have to go over like a little bridge, but we're walking distance from yeah. the ocean. And sometimes after we shut the so shop, we... It's about that much ocean you can see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we it's take a little walk. Spartan and, you know, sometimes there are whales, sometimes there are yachts and occasional sharks, which is very exciting for me. Very rare. Yeah. But, a, um, yeah. a shark lover. Yeah. Do you yeah. like me sharks? Yep. He I loves like his sharks. sharks. So, and this is episode seven. Six. It's, oh, shoot. Is it? No, it is. It's episode six, but it's week seven of Shelter in Place. That's what you meant. That's what I meant. I meant that all along, right? Okay. And yeah. And we know that the in, mm. this, <laughs> in the San Mateo County, we're definitely shut now um, through uh, to the 31st of May. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we're... Um, lots of other places like, or maybe not lots of other places, but some of their places are beginning uh, to open up and, um, but we're still, we're still, um, in lockdown until the 31st of May, but we're doing lots of curbside delivery. We're doing, um, doorstep delivery. And of course we are shipping if you don't live within the area. And um, Tony almost got fired from um, doing the deliveries um, yeah. because I got into the van this morning mm. and a ball of yarn. Ooh, I think that's a FaceTime virtual shop. We'll be right back. This is where I press the pause button. <laughs> press the pause button. I'm pressing the pause. I was all excited. It was the wrong number. Wrong oh, number. well, never mind. <laughs> so that? what were we talking about? Okay, so... Um, oh, I was fired. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got into the van this morning to um, come to the shop, and there was a little hank of yarn that had fallen out of the bag. So we owe a I ball know. of yarn. You really dropped the ball on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I dropped the ball. Little yarn humor. Never yeah. try it again. No. <laughs> so, yeah, so um, I need to go and deliver a ball of yarn. Yeah, yeah. So, oops. Um, oh, well. so, uh, I don't think that they've noticed, but they'll know. They'll know soon enough. Yeah. Um, when we when was it we the one at Rockway? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, it was. It I, was. I can go there. Yep. Yep. Literally. And down speaking the road. of um, of uh, the beach. Yeah. It was um, Shop Angel Judy's birthday a couple of days ago. That's right. So um, that was really sad not to be able to celebrate with her, but yeah. um, happy birthday, Judy. We love happy you. Happy birthday, Judy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I wish I hadn't, hadn't had that bag of almonds now. Really? Like, <laughs> they're stuck in my teeth. <laughs> anyway, so. Um, What's new with you? Oh, <laughs> I'm glad you asked. So much going on this week. So Unbelievable. So much. <laughs> um, I'm continuing with helping our school teach our kids. Um, what else is new? I washed today. That's quite a good achievement. Um, it's podcast day. It's podcast let's day. Wash. So, yeah. So, let's wash. Um, I made pancakes today. They were really good. You know, when you make pancakes, you always so think, good. I should do this every day. Pancakes are great. I feel like you should do it every day. But I just pancakes don't. are the best. That griddle had was had a layer of dust on it. I That's hadn't gross. Used it in so long. Did, you washed it before. Yes, yeah, I did. Okay, good. 
<laughs> yeah, I did. Of course I did. Pancakes and dust. Dusty pancakes. Mmm. <laughs> Lovely. Um, so, else? yeah, I made pancakes. Yeah. Um, because our school, it was supposed to be pancake, their pancake breakfast. And um, so everyone's sending photographs of themselves eating pancakes to go on the website. So mm -hmm. that was my contribution. But yeah, pancakes are great. They're different to British pancakes. Which are more like crepes. Yeah, crepes. So <laughs> well, that's how you said them, crepes. Um, <clears throat> I say crepe. Yeah, you do. Um, but in Britain, I also say crepes. Say Chris Sandwich. You do. You say croissant. <laughs> croissant. Um, but anyway, just rub my eye. Oh my goodness. Um, yeah, so I made pancakes today. Mm. And they're great. And the mix we got was, I don't know where you got the mix I from. Never heard of the brand. Yeah. Um, but it was a really good mix. It was yeah. delicious. Mm. I'm trying to think of now other words like, like root and route and... What are some other like really funny like tomato? Tomato. Oh, aluminum. Aluminum. I say aluminium. Yeah. Um, um, there's um, one I re <laughs> this is a funny one. I learned the difference between pavement and sidewalk. Oh. It's really important to get right with kids when you take them on a field trip. Because I would say, because I remember when I first came to America, I took the kids, we took the kids to the park up the road, mm -hmm. San Pedro Park. Uh, frontier land it's called sorry frontier land and i remember said okay stay stay on the pavement which uh, means well, the, yeah. in britain pavement mm -hmm. means the sidewalk in america pavement is the road so some of my kids started going onto the road <laughs> it was hilarious didn't lose any kids but um, that's fine yeah <clears throat> anyway so that that's hilarious and um, what else? What else is hilarious <laughs> is that I just I laugh for every every time we do these um, things, we have to put a bit of pink tape oh, yeah, we've got on pink the camera because otherwise we we're look like we we'll, right? we'll, we'll look like we're looking over the top of the head like that. Yeah, was kind I of know. Weird. We so, I still forget to look at where the. So tape I say, is, focus on the pink tape. Yeah, it's hard to. Yeah. It's still hard to focus on the pink tape. Yeah. I know the other thing. What um, else is new? I've been working out a bit more. Yeah, getting buff. <laughs> <laughs> not really um i do a bit of exercise every day um i'm addicted really... to the office it's terrible it was the office the, the there's the british office which is fantastic but the american office you just have to watch five minutes of one episode and it hooks you in so badly in, yeah. i don't know if you're an office fan but oh my god I'm, I'm i started off watching a little bit of an episode of season one and now i'm on mm -hmm. season four within like a space of five days it's quite scary but i do a bit of work for my school and if i have like a coffee break if like no one's zooming zoom meeting me i switch on a bit of the office i watch a bit of 10 minutes and it's just a nice way to decompress i've seen them so many times and they're so funny so that's what i've been doing this week what have you been doing this week cal um, work 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 yeah kelly works seven days a week yep from like, like seven till now. seven you're yeah. crazy just trying to trying to keep things going you do what you got to do yeah um I just want to say oh, your hair I, looks really good today <laughs> thanks. kelly's been also I, not I, yeah, blow drying I, her hair i'm not um i'm basically going all a natural i'm washing my hair and letting it dry naturally oh natural. Oh, natural. Oh, oh oh natural yeah um and just letting it dry naturally for a change it looks really good today thanks i just um you got that kind of nice wave going on there yeah, i tried kind of to get unruly. that wave in my hair not... but <laughs> it's my wave little... is like a the tide goes out before a tsunami that's what my <laughs> my style is pre-tsunami um yeah so i just i was trying to give my hair a, a little break mm. um that's doing good you shouldn't thanks. you need and the warmer weather now you, it's yeah. gonna yeah. yeah do you think uh and then, yeah. uh, what were you going to say? Nothing. Hmm, okay. No. I have no oh, nail polish on my toes. Uh, maybe the first time in like 20 years or something like that. Mm -hmm. Something ridiculous. I always, like, always, always, always have a uh, pedicure. So my toes are breathing. It's probably a good thing. Yeah. And um, our potato is... Not doing well. It's not doing well. Um, actually, we reached out to Patricia yeah. uh, to find out what we ought to be doing with the potato. 
Um, so our mascot is shriveling. It needs it's, to be in the dark. Keep it in the so. dark, she says. We had that debate, didn't we? I thought keeping it in the dark. Yeah, would that's stop that's it what you do growing, when you're quarantined. You debate over <laughs> how to grow potatoes. potatoes. <laughs> and apparently you've got to um, grow it in the dark. Oh. Yeah, so yeah, it's, it's not, not doing much very well. disappointing flower the It is. Oh, I know another fun thing that happened to me this week. What's Rodney that? and Charles, um, who I had mentioned last oh, week yeah. because Rodney had a birthday. Um, came and um, they we didn't capture it on video, no. but um, they um, had ordered some yarn and I was doing a curbside delivery. They were like, okay, we're gonna drive. We'll, you know, we'll text you when we arrive. And then of course, what I do is I, I take the yarn, I put it out and then, you know, social distance myself. They're the best. So they put loud Irish music on. And Charles was in a, a kilt that actually Tony, I bought Tony um, a kilt in the um, Black Watch Tartan um, because that his grandfather um, wore that. Um, now that he was, was a, part of assigned his, to the Black Watch soldiers. Right. So it was, you know, it's a family thing. And the Welsh Tartan is very um, boring. So um, I got him the Black Watch one. And um, I bought too small a size, so I gave it to Charles. And long story short, they blast the music. Charles gets out of the car and starts to do a jig. And I mean, he can <laughs> do I'd a jig. That. This guy can do a jig, I'm telling you. So I put up on Instagram a picture yeah, a great um, of photo Rodney on Instagram and that Charles. A lot of people have but, liked already. Yeah. Got over 100 likes. That's good for us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're only little. So that was a real highlight of my week. Made me super happy. That was it's good. It's just the little things in life, right? Like your friends. At the moment, the friends. Coffee in the morning. Coffee. Um, oh, your new coffee. You got a new coffee pot. That's exciting. <laughs> I did. I get a new pot, coffee pot, which you can set to um, have coffee mm -hmm. when you wake up. And uh, this nice weather, I'm going to sit out front and you go up at the neighbors and drink coffee in the mornings, I think. Tony's a total coffee geek. He has how many machines? I don't know. You have a Turkish coffee maker. You have this new machine. You've got a, a really... The Breville. Um, got it's a an espresso. Yeah. Or a espresso, French press, as yeah. you call them. Mm -hmm. um, I've got a couple of pour overs. Bit of a coffee geek. And one of our hive is also a coffee geek, we yeah. discovered. Well, she's not a coffee geek. She's a coffee aficionado Ida um it uh, roasts her own coffee mm -hmm. um in her I think her backyard yeah she's made a coffee she's roaster phenomenal. in phenomenal and yeah. she gives us free coffee well she gave me a jar of coffee which I think lasts yeah. about three and a half hours so. yeah <laughs> no was. it lasts a couple of days yeah. but um yeah they were amazing I keep I, I you know both of us have a little a little bit of food in our tea. Do we? Well, I do. I have that. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. But I mean, like, both of us are, like, trying to remove the power snacks before our uh, video podcast. Yeah, we do have power snacks. <laughs> like Target Lady. I'm going to have half an almond. Mm. It worked. <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah. We got a guest today, Cal. Oh, we have two guests. Two guests. We have two guests. We have two amazing guests. Two amazing guests. And um, they're um, Jules, who is a designer, and mm -hmm. her partner, Louis, who is also a designer. So we have a knitwear designer. We have Two designers. Crochet. That's like two for the price of one. Two for the price of one. We've got a crochet designer. Knitwear. Jules is knitwear designer. You'll see her, her stuff on Ravelry. We'll make sure that we put her full name and... Um, uh, so that you can um, check her out on Ravelry, Ravelry and same with Louie. And Louie, in addition to being a crochet designer on Ravelry, has a Crochet 101. He's just done a new... You were um, just watching it this morning. Yeah, yeah. Aragurumi um, uh, war game uh, that he's tabletop war game out of Aragurumi or Amigurumi. Amigurumi? I don't actually know how to pronounce it. So I we'll no ask. What she's about I'll right ask um, Louis. Amigurumi. Amigurumi? Amigurumi? I think that's right. I think that's right. Is that something Ami... you, do, you do to dogs? No. <laughs> you say, Amigurumi need me dog. <laughs> I can't believe you just did that. <laughs> There's too much cutting. 
too much caffeine. But anyway, yeah. Yeah, and he and he has video tutorials and just the cutest, just just the cutest little characters and pieces, and like he has a little ch chicken drumsticks and. Just, I can't wait to see this I'm, stuff. I'm really inspired by. It. I think I think Louis might actually be the person that converts you to a, a fiber art of some description or another because i've always like happen. i don't want it i never liked sweaters i don't wear sweaters or scarves i like hats. i do but i've yeah i know you do but i've always wanted to do i've always been attracted to like you know when we before we opened the shop I remember the yeah. before we had the shop, we went to the crafts fair. Yeah. What's it called? The crafts. Oh, the Renegade Craft Fair. Right in um, yeah. yeah. And we met this um, designer called Twinkie Chan. Well, I knew her because we had featured her in Molly Makes back in the day, so I was but familiar with her. It was seeing her stuff that made yeah. me think. Well, maybe yeah, I'd like to make stuff that looks that it's, looks like like stuff. Like well. I mean, I think I that Louis' explain. board game, like make it's a little fruit. war board yeah. game, is so up your alley. I, it's absolutely adorable. Yeah, I'm, I'm welcome to anything. And jewels, own, but, um, not to just you know, jewels has the most beautiful taste. Absolutely beautiful taste. Well, um, her designs are stunning. I'm so excited to have. I think both we need to segue out. to meet them. I think we do. So let's so meet let's, them now. Hi, Jules. Hi, Louis. <laughs> <laughs> I made the mistake of putting gum in my nose oh, just okay. before we did this. I'm All right, so yeah. Go okay, ahead. so mm, now we're recording. Yeah, now. <laughs> <laughs> I might keep it in. We might keep it in. Maybe you will, maybe oh, you won't. Yeah, I like that. So um, this is Jules and Louie. And I'm Jules. This is Louie. <laughs> wait, wait, this is Louie? <laughs> this is Jules. This, don't know anymore. I'm Louie. And they are like a yarn power couple. Ooh. Right? Right? I like it. I wouldn't disagree. <laughs> <laughs> and we have both sides of the, the fence, as it were, because we have Louie, who is Louie Loops, Crochet 101. He also is a Ravelry designer for crochet. He does... Um, Ari Magum Ami, Ami, Ami Garumi. I tell people I tell people I'm a professional hooker, which is why You're I wore the shirt. Hooker. Yeah. And <laughs> I was watching a whole bunch of your stuff today and I just got like sucked down a total rabbit hole of like all the stuff that you do. So I'll let yeah, you, a lot. I'll let you um, describe that because you'll do a better job than me. And then Jules is just a beautiful, beautiful designer. I love your Aww. aesthetic. I love all of your designs. I'd reached out to Jules pretty early on when I launched my yarn asking if she wouldn't uh, like a little yarn support for some of the things <laughs> she's doing. She was also featured in I Knit San Francisco. And if you go to Ravelry and take a look at um, her designs, you'll see a whole bunch of really um, beautiful, beautiful patterns. Oh, thank so, you. Um, do you guys want to tell, say your full names uh -huh. um, so that people can look your patterns up on Ravelry? Sure. Uh, I can go first. I'm Juliana Lustenotter, and my uh, design name in Ravelry is Jules Lustenotter. Um, and my Instagram handle is knit by Jules. And that is a great place to follow me for any upcoming patterns or test knits. Perfect. Perfect. I'm Louis. Uh, Louis Mensinger is my name, but I go online by Louis Loops. L-O-U-I-E-S and then Loops. Uh, but I also run a company called Club Crochet, which is a crocheter's... I say it's a subscription service for hookers. <laughs> uh, it's crochet. You can sign up uh, and you get new patterns every month. I come up, I do a bunch of free patterns and I do video tutorials for everything I do. Uh, if you want to follow on Instagram and social media, you can either follow Louis Loops or Club Crochet. If you look up either one of them, you'll, you'll probably find them. Um, yeah, and I do Ami Gurumi. I, I crochet like little, I'll do this guy, little crocheted characters I this mean, is an ogre it's a, um, a ogre in your new game your tabletop game thing. yeah this is actually a piece of it so i can i created a tabletop game that's called stitched um it's here's here's like uh, the little oh 
<laughs> there it is. The little logo. Uh, it's You can find that at stitchedthegame.com. Uh, but yeah, it's a tabletop game where you crochet all your pieces. Uh, I say you you just make your pieces from home out of arts and crafts in general because everything is measured from the base of your character. So like, you know, you measure from from the base and you use playing cards to measure distance and all you need is a six-sided dice to play. It's a relatively simple game, but it has like a lot of complexity to it. And I think the coolest part is that you get to create, be creative and make your own pieces and stuff. You make the whole game yourself, yeah. whether it's clay or yarn or uh, origami, anything. Yeah, you can make it however you want. You can knit some pieces. I keep trying to get her to knit pieces, <laughs> but she won't do it for some reason. I will, reason. I will. I just haven't had time. Uh-huh, sure, sure. I don't want to put any pressure on you, Louie, but when I was talking to Tony earlier, I was like, I think this guy might be the person that actually like converts you into, um, into crocheting. <laughs> yep. I, like, you know... You know, you make things like chicken drumsticks. And yeah. <laughs> like we, we had one of those. Yeah, Wait, they're in the box, away. actually. Oh, wait, it's fine. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Oh, it's going to, yeah. Chicken drumstick. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. That's, that's awesome. awesome. <laughs> There's a little <laughs> steak, too. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the, I think, honest, honestly, I think crochet is, doesn't get enough credit, uh, especially amigurumi, because the fact that you can just make, you can make literally anything out of Amy Grimm. It's like working with clay. And it's so quick. Like, this takes me, I don't know, five, ten minutes to make one of these. It's super quick. And it's really easy. I think it's a lot easier than knitting, uh, especially to, like, learn. But... <laughs> but that's just my opinion. You know which side of the fence I'm on. Yeah. I'm outnumbered. I For sure I'm outnumbered, but still. Now, that type of uh, craft... Years to me great for making objects and things. I like that. I, so I found that crochet is especially um, appealing to me because when I was when I started crocheting, I would try to make beanies and gloves and stuff. But I found that a lot of the things that I wanted to make myself, I couldn't, I couldn't really wear because a lot of the designs are mostly designed for women, um, and. I found that amigurumi is like a totally different ball game because you're not making anything to wear. You're just making toys or mm -hmm. whatever you want, really. So that's why I think it. I I don't know if this. I don't know if this is just for myself, but I found as a male cr yarn crafter, it's a lot harder for me to find designs that appeal to, like, to myself. So I think that's why crocheting is. You mean like garment designs? The garment designs, yeah. yeah. I, I, think, I have a hard time finding garment designs. I think it's underrepresented. That's why it's yeah. so important to me to have you very early on. Also, um, you know, we've we've met, we know each other, but yeah. I feel like crochet is a little underrepresented uh, in terms of... Yeah. Um, and it's an amazing, spectacular craft. I, I don't understand why it is underrepresented. Fix it, Louie. I feel like yeah, you... I... I, I, I <laughs> I That's do think I that do. I'm doing a lot better. <laughs> I think I'm doing a pretty okay job because I did create, yeah. I created a video series and ebook that's completely for free. Got crocheting 101. Yeah, crocheting101.com. So if anybody wants to learn how to crochet, it's like a 10 video series that teaches you how to crochet from beginning to end, no matter how yarn illiterate you may be. And throughout the series, you create projects as you're going to, so you can see your active you know progression through crocheting and it's all free and it's all free all digital it's i'm very proud of it um but yeah i think i think it's underrepresented because i i mean it got started a lot later than knitting i yeah. think right because yeah. it was like 1800s it's pretty new, it's pretty new. Yeah. Yeah. And, and i then, think the earliest representation of knitting needles um is from the um i want to say it's the 11th or 12th century they had knitting madonnas and then the oldest artifact is actually um was found in an ancient egyptian tomb whoa so That's like really far uh, knitting, away. knitting really has been around for a super 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 long time yeah yeah, yeah that so, must be fair away <laughs> yeah there we, sorry. <laughs> also i think amigurumi is is a very fresh version of the craft. I think that's mm -hmm. like less than 50 years old. So that, 
and I think that has boosted Crochet's popularity a lot. So I I think it's on the it, Plus I think Instagram. it's on the upturn. I think Instagram helped a lot with yeah with definitely. Crochet's popularity. Yeah, too. I th I mean I think comparatively, if you compared times, Crochet's graph of how popular it's getting is going up very quickly with you know internet to just popularity. Um, whereas knitting, I think it's like it's always been high and it's just like. It's it just has staying ebbs and high. flows. It definitely has ebbs and flows. Yeah, 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 true, true. But, yeah, that's my opinion on crocheting and knitting. <laughs> you guys meet over yarn? Kind of. Wait, can I tell the story? Yeah. I want to tell the story. Okay, so we actually met on Tinder, which is uh, not as super romantic when you first hear it, but <laughs> wait till I tell you what his picture was on oh, Tinder. Uh -huh. his, the reason why I swiped right was because his picture was him not looking at the camera, He's looking off to the side. He has a crochet hook in his mouth, and hanging from the crochet hook is a mini crocheted version of himself <laughs> that he's making eye contact with. Yeah. And, or like. Yeah, and that crochet hook is like a rose you you would have in your mouth when you're tangoing. And I was like, "Yep, done. Yeah, we're ready. Yeah. Let's go." That is one of my favorite <laughs> pictures of myself. I think. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna be my funeral picture. No. <laughs> I have a very dark uh, sense of humor. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Anyway, we met online. Yeah, we met online, and, and we yeah, we. <laughs> it was yeah. okay. Oh. Post COVID, not so okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Should we ask? Um, yeah. So yeah. So Jules, where did you grow up? Oh, I'm from the Bay Area. I grew up in Saratoga, California, uh, mm -hmm. but I've been living in San Francisco for over ten years now. And in the yeah. sunset for eight or nine of those years. Yeah. How yeah. about you, Louie? I'm from Southern California. I'm from uh, I'm from Ventura County, uh, which is near L.A. And then I moved up here for school uh, to go to San Francisco State. I majored in anthropology, which is super useful for crocheting. And <laughs> um, and then I just, you know, I got I got hooked and I got stuck around. Yeah. I also went to SF State at the same time. Yeah. But we never met. We didn't know each other. No, we knew the same people, but we didn't know each other. Did have we talked about the fact that I'm from Ventura? You know, I think I've brought yeah. it up and you and your like eyes lit up, but then we always move on or something. But yeah, I I think I knew that. Where from Ventura are you from? Um, do you know the Redwood condominiums right by the pier and the promenade? Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's right. Yeah. Oh, so you're from like Ventura. From Ventura. Yeah. That's so I'm from Thousand Oaks. Okay, Thousand Oaks. It's a little yeah. fancier than Ventura. <laughs> yeah. Fancy, people, really. people are a little bit, uh, especially Westlake, very hoity-toity over there. Ventura. Which is why I wasn't too too upset about leaving it. <laughs> <laughs> Ventura reminds me a little bit of like I feel like Pacifica is like mm -hmm. Ventura of the North. Totally. Um, very much agree with you. I think it's exactly the same kind of feel. Yeah, I yeah, agree. Kind of, yeah. yeah. Okay, my question. Oh, okay, okay. My turn. Okay, when you were little, what did you want to be when you grew up? You go. I I think I was hmm I was always creative. So I'm sure I wanted to be something creative so i think i'm doing well there i i mean when i was really little it was probably like an astronaut because who doesn't want to be an astronaut honestly still i would love to be an astronaut we all do somewhere in us yeah <laughs> but i think once i learned honestly once i learned how to crochet I, I i wanted to be a crocheter so like sophomore year of high school is when i really decided this is what i wanted to do and my dad i remember vividly my dad going hey, maybe you should think about doing something else because crocheting and, and that was a huge fuel in my you know on my butt of like <laughs> okay well screw you now I'm definitely gonna do this <laughs> you know high school yeah, yeah yeah it's like saying don't push the red button well I'm yeah. gonna push the red button yeah, now. Well, now I'm definitely gonna and now it. his dad helps him build the kits that he yeah. sends out to his customer Aww. they have a great relationship with crochet yeah. I still am not just a crocheter I still do have other jobs but that yeah. is what I, I want to do. Yeah. Full time. 
How about you? Uh, when I was a kid, honestly, I didn't really know what I wanted to be. Uh, when I was in second grade, I showed interest in gymnastics when I watched the Olympics with my mom, and she's like, great, that's a thing. So she put me on a gymnastics team. I thought, okay, I'll just do this. I'll get, like, scholarships with gymnastics. Um, and I was addicted for quite a while, but then in middle school we had to pick electives, and gymnastics was not an elective, uh, but drama was. So I picked drama, and I was just hooked. So going into high school, I knew I'm going to focus on theater, and I'm, that's what I want to do. And so I majored in theater arts at San Francisco State, and I still perform in plays and musicals after all my day job. All the time, until COVID. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but that is uh, um, my second source of income, um, being an actress. Uh, I just won an award, actually, for a show I did last summer, so it's going really well. Like, just, just like, like yesterday. yesterday. <laughs> Congratulations! Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, the award. Uh, best Supporting Actress in a Musical. Wow. Yeah, it's, wow. it was fun. Um, but uh, this whole designing thing showed up uh, right after college. I was looking for a job. I just picked up knitting from a show I was in. I was bored backstage, and my assistant stage manager taught me how to knit, and so it was a hobby I was diving into. And my mom thought, well, why don't you find a job that relates to your interests right now? Why don't you work at a knitting store? Why not? And so I started working at Imagine It, and they're, uh, they're in San Francisco. And from there, I just thought, look at all this yarn, look at all these designs around me. I'm so inspired. and I did my first design, it went well, and it's been history ever since. Yeah. And um, if you were stranded on a desert island, and you had to eat the exact same meal over oh. and over and over again, what would you choose? I, I know exactly what mine would Go be. Ahead. So I would eat a uh, turkey, avocado, mustard, and uh, sriracha mayo sandwich. Um, well, or chicken, either one would work with pepper jack cheese, toasted every day, and then for the drink, I drink uh, orange juice. He's uh, we joke that. Know what you like? Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> we joke that he's a hummingbird because he only drinks juice. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> my spirit animal is a hummingbird because That's really I. Sweet. Uh, juice. uh, my meal would be mac and cheese because I love mac and cheese. I know it's not good for me, but I don't care. Yeah, you <laughs> stranded on a desert island, just go yeah. for it. You know what? Yeah. Mac and cheese it up. Yeah, oh, absolutely. That's it. Might as well. <laughs> I think that's a really good choice. Honestly, Thank you. I do too. Well, you know what? The thing is, it's it's quite fat. Both of you guys have like quite balanced, like protein, carbohydrate. You know. You yeah, I get. I got the fun. orange juice, so I don't worry about gangrene. Right. Or, or I got the cheese to get fat. I'm. Yeah. I'm fine. <laughs> You need the calories. You're, I need them. You're on a stranded desert island. Yeah, right. You're going to need them. <laughs> okay, my question. I'm going to change this question, babe, because it, it, it baffles people. Oh, all right. So I'm going to say, what was the last piece of music you played really loud? I pl oh. Now, do you, when you say play, do you mean play? No, I like played. No, like. Either. 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 What's the last well, piece of music you played on a sound system? Sound system really, yeah. Okay. I, I listen to a lot of, uh, I guess, kind of funk. I listen like Wolfpack. I think is the last one I listened to very adamantly, um, which is a band from L.A. that is very silly, but they're just really dancey. I love Wolfpack. Check them out. I think they're amazing. I think everybody would love them. Okay. That's mine. Yeah, they're awesome. Uh, last piece of music I played really loud was uh, Laura Marling's new album, which I enjoyed. Um, I just love Laura Marling. Uh, she is a folk singer, singer-songwriter from England. She now lives in L.A. Um, she's changing her style up a lot right now, um, but I highly recommend it. If you have not heard of her, go check out her old stuff at the very yeah, least. Laura definitely Marling. check out old, her old stuff. What is, what's the album that, um, like the older album that's really, really good? I'm terrible at album With names. Ghost? <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, but, uh, My Manic and I is probably my oh, favorite yeah. song from that her. Oh, yeah, that one is so good, yeah. She's really big at the moment, yeah, I think. Mm -hmm. That's the first one I'm thinking. Yeah, she's getting more popular, for sure. Yeah, definitely. She's on, she's on the uprise. Do you guys actually play music? I do, and yeah. she plays ukulele. Yeah, I, I, I play ukulele and I write some songs, but I never, that's just for myself, really. Uh, 
Jules plays music and puts it online, and it's very good, and you should <laughs> all check it out. She's got a band called Baird and Beluga. Baird is like a, a type of whale. It's like a dolphin. They're both whale. whales. Beluga. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and Beluga, yeah. And it's Baird spelled B-A-I-R-D. Mm -hmm. Oh, Baird and Beluga. Okay. Yeah, you can find us on Spotify. We They're just released great. Um, our I'm second. I'm so excited! Yeah, yeah, check, really it out. check us out. You also play music. Yes, you're a band. Yeah, yeah, we do. We're, we're, band. we're currently, um, our band is currently writing a, a sea shanty themed mini album. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. How do you do that? How do you do that in COVID time? Yeah. We Zoom, um, but yeah. also we got together. We took a vacation last year to LA and it was a songwriting vacation for like four days. Oh, and that's so cool. And yeah. all day every day writing songs together and going off into our rooms, writing, meeting back, playing our stuff, contributing to oh, it, meeting back. Stuff. That is so cool. Yeah. So it's a key theme. We got a story and we're now writing songs based on that story. So, that so you you, go, you wrote the story first and then you, you're you writing songs based. So it's, it's going to be a concept album? It is, yeah. That is so cool. So, yeah. Sort of Decemberous in terms of oh, yeah. concept, oh, yeah. like the but nothing of like, kind of but no, nothing like that in terms of the music. Very but, yeah. Ooh, interesting! Yeah. I can't wait to hear it. I'm very excited. Concept albums are my favorite. Uh, that's that's my favorite kind of way to listen to a whole album. Okay, what are your favorite colors? I always oh. find this is just I just find this interesting with people who are yarn lovers. Yeah, uh, well, my favorite color, I always say is purple, but my favorite color to wear and knit is teal. Oh, and I think it's like color. the color that knitters go to other than neutrals. You when I worked at Imagine It, teal was always like the first color off the shelves. Yeah, you're a thief. That's funny. I had no <laughs> idea that was the truth. And yet my Nina says, have your teal, teal cake and eat it too, 100% yep. sold out. This one? You mean this colorway? That's this the yeah. colorway that you dyed was all natural, like yeah. amazingness. And look at that. <laughs> Incredible. I mean, that's kind of like a reveal, isn't it? Yeah, that is. That's a little bit of a teaser. That's it a teaser. is a teaser. teaser. Are you going to say more about it, Jules? I can. Do you want me to? Sure. Okay. Uh, well, this is a new design uh, that I designed using your worsted weight. Yay. And uh, it's called Where the Waves Meet. For obvious reasons you see the waves yeah. uh, we just did a, a photo shoot on the beach and the pictures turned out great really good yeah. um the pattern is tech edited and i just need to put it up for testing and will be released this summer and you'll have kits ready for everybody and it's gonna be awesome thank you so, so i still so. need to start on mine oh yeah he's gonna do i'm doing i'm gonna do one as well it's gonna i i'm i want to do a whale and i want to do it more I was going to do it a little cartoony, but I think I'm going a little bit more realistic. Yeah. So I need to work uh, more. Yeah. yeah. And my favorite color is also, I lo love teal. This teal specifically is my favorite. I still answer. And then, uh, <laughs> and I love maroon, like this kind of maroon. A lot of our house yeah. is this color. Our yeah. carpets and, yeah. I, like <laughs> I noticed that your cushions, I think we have, did you get that at Anna's Furniture? This one? This one? Oh, on Amazon, actually. We got it on Amazon, yeah. It came with the couch table? A chair yeah, I think it came with in that exact same fabric. Oh, cool. You know, I've seen, I've gone to friends' houses and have seen these exact same pillows, too. Yeah. So it, I, They're very popular. Yeah. <laughs> I, and and you, it's really funny when you see pillows that you also own, because you're like, well, that can't be. Those are my pillows. <laughs> One time, I was in a play that had these really vibrant zigzag pillows uh, as a prop on a couch on set. It was Tinderella. And as soon as the play closed, you and I went to Ikea for a shopping trip, and those pillows were there at the very front of Ikea. And I'm like, no, wait a minute. No, yeah, no, 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 no. Those no, can't no. be. No, no, no. Those only exist why... in my play. Yeah. They do not exist at Ikea. <laughs> I wonder why that is about pillows specifically that, like, we think of them as a – specifically with that couch or something. I don't know. We went off topic. Yeah. <laughs> little, it's fine. I have a little bit of a I – have, I have two, like, sort of – I have, I, have a, I have a thing with cushions. Like I'm always changing out cushions. I'll, I'll see cushions and be really inspired and get new cushions. And Tony will be like, you didn't buy more cushions. Yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I, 
Since we moved here in 2008, you have bought 37 cushions. <laughs> what do you do with... What do you do with them? They just go, they just disappear into like a black hole. What does your bed look like? Does your bed have like a bunch of pillows? Like half of the bed is pillows? Is this oh, okay, good. Okay. Good, good, good. Just kill me. My mom, my mom does that all the time and I'm always like, it's so annoying because you got to yeah. just take all these pillows, you have to throw them on the floor when you go into bed. It's yeah. like, then half you're your ruining, room is just pillows. And you're ruining pillows. And then yeah. you get up in the night to go to the bathroom and you break your ankles. <laughs> yeah. Get over the cushions. Yeah. <laughs> that was a fun. Okay, next question. Have we already asked that one? I th well, sure. Yeah, but I, yeah, yeah. Uh, th the next question, which we might have answered all already, but you can answer it again, was what was your journey to becoming a designer? But Oh, yeah, I kind of, yeah. Uh, I'll recap. I have a little bit of a recap. Uh, yeah, I just, I learned how to knit when I was bored backstage and got hooked on it, ironically. Uh, technically, I learned how to knit uh, in high school, but my, my best friend taught me, but I forgot. Yeah, um, but she doesn't let you forget. She does not let me forget. No. <laughs> <laughs> um and I was also taught how to crochet when I was a kid. That did not stick. No. It, it didn't. It didn't work in my brain. No. And now when he tries to teach me how to crochet, I hold the yarn in the wrong hand. It's and actually incredible. I end up like Tunisian crocheting. It's, yeah, it's, it's really weird. But but <laughs> what's crazy is she crochets using. She holds the crochet hook and the yarn in the same hand, so she could feasibly crochet with one oh. hand. Wow. It's. I don't. I don't understand how it works. Like it's really, I was trying to figure it's out. It's not good. Are you a continental knitter? No, uh, uh, English style. So okay. I hold yeah. when I knit, I hold the yarn in my right hand as well. So yeah. since you only have one hook, you're gonna hold it in your right hand. Yeah. Okay, yarn's in your hand too. And so All right, I'm, that makes sense. I'm throwing yeah. when I should not be throwing. It's really interesting. <laughs> um, I, I'm a thrower, and I recently learned how to crochet, which I love. And I'm a lefty though. And but yeah. I learned how to crochet right-handed, yeah. and I, I, I when I teach uh, when I teach people to knit, um, I always teach them right-handed because you're using both yeah. hands. Yeah. So it really doesn't matter. It truly doesn't matter. But crochet, I couldn't do it right-handed, and I wanted to really badly, but I just can't. Wow. Yeah, it's so crochet's a really interesting one to do left-handed too. I need to change my tutorials i need to start adding a left-handed version by just like flipping the video because it is comp like it is diff different i mean you're going the opposite way when you're working in a spiral you're working the other way in the spiral so patterns actually are different it's yeah. a, that's really interesting well that's why i'm of two minds here and i don't think there's a right answer here but when i worked at imagine it it seemed like if if someone is left-handed and they really are starting from the beginning you still want to teach them the right to left way of knitting, um, the proper way, though there is a version of knitting left to uh, mm. left to right, um, and but that's only because patterns are written yeah. for the right-handed way. So yeah. you'll be better off knowing that way, whether that's your dominant hand or not, because you don't have to change every pattern you come across. Yeah, I totally, a million percent agree with you. Oh. Yeah, and unfortunately, designers can't write the same pattern for both sides. As nice as that would be, we that's twice the work. Yeah. Yeah. And to answer your question about where... Oh, yeah, uh, your journey. My journey to crochet. <laughs> um, I started in high school. Uh, I was just really crafty. And some... Uh, that I had a crush on a girl. And so I would make her a lot of things. And I found some crocheted stuff online. Uh, and so I would crochet her things. And I, I just got really... The, the weird thing is, when I started to learn how to crochet, I never learned with any tutorials. I just went straight to a pattern. So I ended up learning how to crochet incorrectly a lot of times. Um, and so when it came to... And then I would also make up stitches on the go. Uh, so when it came to designing my patterns, it was really difficult for me to to explain the stitches that I was using because they there was no... I, at least I didn't know what the name was for a lot of these stitches. So that's why I started doing videos and got pretty good at doing videos for that. Um, and then now, you know, now I, I do videos for every single tutorial I do. And then if you're curious, the crocheting things for someone did work. We dated. It was terrible. It was a really bad relationship. But I it worked. Not the girl. Not the girl. It did work. It did. Yeah. And, and, uh, a lot of the stitches that he came up with, 
truly did not exist before. You've you've discovered. Yeah, I have invented a few for many? sure. At least like three stitches. Yeah, yeah I've, I would I've say I've that I've, I've, I have invented the most the, recent the one bobble. is the spiked bobble. I'll show you. He's it. so proud of this. I'm really I am really proud of this one. So it's like it's a bobble stitch. If you know how to crochet, it's it's just a bobble stitch, but there's a mini peacock in the middle of the bobble stitch. And it turns it into like this little spike. Wow. So you can use it for little hands and stuff. I use it for tails. This guy's nose and ears are made with it. Oh, that's so like a. Cute. It's a really simple way to add a spike. And I actually made it up. I was completing the, the pattern for uh, these goblin. Well, these are trolls, but the goblinoids is what I call them. And right before I had the pattern was to create a nose separately and then sew it on. And right before I finished the pattern, I thought, you know what? Maybe if I do a mini peacock in the middle of this bobble stitch, then I could save myself something sewn on. Because in crocheting, that is easily the worst part of crocheting is sewing things together. And same so, with knitting, seeing yeah. anything is not fun. It's just the worst. So I try to make all my patterns with the least amount of, of sewing together as possible. Like the goblins, these little guys, the only thing you sew on is the lip. Everything else is just made in one, which make, which is why you can make it in like 15 minutes. But... Um, so right before I came out with this pattern, I, uh, I created this whole new stitch and I had to redo all the patterns. It took me like an extra month and a half to do these patterns because I had to re-record all the videos. That's when and... you're a visionary. <laughs> That's <laughs> yeah. terrible. Well, because once you release it, I mean, I'm sure you know, once you release a pattern oh, and yeah. you have, and you realize there's a better way to do it. And now I have to go back and redo those patterns. It's just such a hassle. You know what I do instead? I, I make a new pattern. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what I've been just doing. Just like, okay, so. well, I learned from that scenario. I have this new technique. How yeah. can I do it well starting over? And not copy the old pattern. Create something new um, using that different technique. Because yeah. technically, like, this top could be made three different ways and end up looking the same to the untrained eye. It's just a matter of which technique do you want yeah. to write down and thus teach to other knitters who are buying your pattern. If you want to learn, by the way, if you want to learn how to make that spiked bobble, go to clubcrochet.com slash spiked bobble and you'll go and it'll bring up a video where I teach you how to do it. I make all my things like really easy so I could just be like, go here. There you like go. I said, I just, uh, you know, I was looking up stuff a little bit earlier today, just doing a little tiniest bit of preparation, which I've not done before. And I just was like, I was gone for hours, just yeah. like, oh my gosh, I'm going to be able to learn all of this stuff yeah. because uh, what I know is so incredibly basic, but you do everything. And then the little mini projects in between, like little friendship bracelet. And, you know, it's really, it's really, a fact. it's really good. It's very, I'm very good. I'm really proud of it. It's you definitely could... like the best. Yeah, I'm, it's, I started as a Kickstarter actually, um, which I hated doing it as a Kickstarter because Kickstarting, it's just, once you do a Kickstarter, it feels less like something you really want to do and suddenly it's a job. So I didn't like that process, but I am very grateful that I did it that way because it gave me the opportunity to build this free uh, crochet tutorial thing mm -hmm. that I knew I wanted to do anyhow. Yeah. I love that it's free as well. It's sharing it with everybody. Yeah. 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 Anybody yeah. can be a hooker. Yeah. Okay. Do you guys have, in closing, do you guys have a good joke to tell? Oh. I got 50. All right. Get started. Give us your best joke. Give it. Bring it on. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. I'll do the one that pe that is makes sense because the a lot of my jokes don't make sense, and the point of the joke is that they don't make sense, and I like the people's yeah, reaction. Yeah, it's really funny when you explain it before you tell it. But I'll make I'll do the one that does make <laughs> sense because that one's the other ones are stupid. Okay. As say, um, so a polar bear walks into a bar, and sits down at the the bar, and the bartender goes, oh. What can I, uh, what can I get for you? You're looking kind of down. What, what, what would you like? And polar bear goes, uh, I'll take a Jack and Coke. And the bartender goes, all right, what's with the huge paws? And he goes, oh, what these? I was born with them. That's, that's... <laughs> I like it. <laughs> um, I like the PG. I like the fact that Tony could take that to his school. And yeah. And repeat yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, then I got a PG one. It's also the okay. only one I could. One whale 
swims up to the other whale and says, And the other whale says, Larry, you're drunk. <laughs> that was great execution. <laughs> Fine, you could have just stopped he at the just sound. Stopped. <laughs> That's, yeah, you could have stopped the sound. The joke, the joke it gets funny. better the longer you do the sound. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. All about yeah. commitment. <laughs> I like that. Wow. Oh, you guys have been so delightful. That was fantastic. Oh, this is thank great. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you you are awesome. Oh, oh actually, God. before you go, I wanted to do like a quick little plug. I hope you don't mind. Um, we saw that you interviewed Nina last time. Oh, yeah. From, uh, from Speckled Finch. And I just wanted to plug her yarn because I'm wearing her yarn. This is her sock weight. This is an upcoming design that'll come up later this May. It's called the Fide Eye Top. Um, but if you check out Nina's Instagram or my Instagram, uh, we are posting all about it, and you'll hear all about um, kits she'll put together for that as well. So Nina's yarn is is wonderful, and and I love it. So that's the quick little plug. And we love yeah. Nina too. We we've, we've such a nice um, kind of fiber community going on in the like Bay Area, and everybody's been incredibly supportive of one another, and I love that. I love that. I love us. Like you said, the last time I was at your store, well, no, a few times ago when I was at your store when Dragon Horde was there, you said many times, and it's so true, all boats rise. Yeah. Boats rise. Yeah. When tide rises, all boats rise. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. Well, we love you guys. Thank you. You've Thank been you. a tremendous yeah. guest. We, I, honestly, I would talk to you for... Forever. Like, yeah, 10 hours, <laughs> no problem. Once this, once this uh, quarantine's over, we should play a game of Stitched. Oh, yeah, we totally yeah. want to. Yeah. And play with these It'd be guys. really fun. It's yeah. fun. We'll make you dinner. We won't do a good job, but we'll make you dinner. Oh, okay. <laughs> we can crochet really well. We just oh, can't. You can teach us, and we'll make you dinner. Yeah. That's perfect. That's I love perfect. this. Great. Yeah. You're on. All right. And I'll be maybe teaching how to crochet. At, I was going to say, but I didn't want to, you know, like, yeah. for sure, teaching crochet oh, yeah. at the Royal Bee, so... Once, yeah. once we can actually have people in there. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> we have a friend at the, the door. So we're going to answer the door. Okay. okay bye. We're not answering the door. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, we're not. We're just, we're just waving. <laughs> it's the Markhams. <laughs> well, thank you so much again for having us. Yes, and, thank you. Yeah. You guys are awesome. We love you. Thank you. I'll say, I'll say what I always say. Pasta la pizza and happy hooking. <laughs> That's a happy oh, t-shirt. Oh, your t-shirt. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, t-shirts. Yeah. If you go to clubcrochet.com, you can find these shirts. And they come in men's and women's. Yeah, and, and I have sex. a bunch of different designs. Yep. Awesome. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Bye. 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 Thanks, Louie and Jules. That was great. That was fantastic. Yes. See, see what we did there? We haven't so even seamless. seen them yet. We haven't done the interview yet. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yeah, so I was going to talk about um, two yarn brands that I carry in the shop. This is the squish you. segment yeah, of the Yeah, this show. is the squish segment of the <laughs> Limber. <laughs> so um, I have... I'm kind, of a, I'm kind of a fanatic about this yarn brand. I do an awful lot of my own, outside of my own yarn, I do a lot of knitting with wool folk. I really, really, really love the fiber. And this one is Luft. And I just uh, grabbed a selection of colors. They're mostly, um, I mean, most of wool folk is a fairly neutral palette, but it's just absolutely gorgeous. And the Luft in particular, I really love because it's wool blown with cotton. And what that means is that um, it is both cool in the summer as well as warm in the winter. So this is one of, this is a bulky weight yarn. Um, I think Turtle Dove is one of the um, patterns that mm. uses uh, this particular wool. And it's just absolutely, it's really um, well, you've, you've actually um, picked up the wrong, um, that's snow. 
Yeah, put that down. That's coming next. That's coming okay, next. Sorry, I got too excited. So you did. You got a little, a little, a little yarn premature. <laughs> So anyway, um, this is just beautiful, and I absolutely love it. I'm actually making Tony a hat out of yeah, um, you are. out of this. It's color really right soft. Now. It's so it feels like soft. a small mammal, <laughs> like a gerbil. I could actually adopt this as a pet. It's so you, soft. Aww. It really is. Just look at the soft so, it's, it's just so oh, beautiful. It's, hmm. Don't want to squish it too much. <laughs> do you want to do like a group squish? You haven't oh, tried that come. yet. <laughs> oh, I'm warmed up at all for this. Okay. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. And so that's the bulky weight. And then I also carry um, far, which is a chain at construction. And I think that this is around 16 micron, which actually makes it like a cashmere grade wool. Mm -hmm. um, it feels like cashmere it is so or alpaca it is so incredibly soft what's the difference between um, cashmere and alpaca they're different animals they come from different places so um, cashmere what sort of goat? animals are cashmere yeah cashmere. the underbelly so of a goat of... or you could also have yeah so uh, cashmere and is then, an animal no it's part of a goat and then alpaca is an alpaca or a llama is a llama yeah I knew so that. um but this is wool but it feels like cashmere and it's a chain at construction so you would think that when you used it, you might be able to um, see that construction in the garment, but you totally can't. I'm gonna get Tony to squish, and then I'm gonna show you a sweater that we have made. It's a, um, a shop sample. It's our only male shop sample, which is a little mean. We should have more male stuff in here, but go I ahead. I just wanna say, I was trying to get you to respond in a way. I do know a cashmere is not an animal. I know it's from a goat. I was just going for a oh, joke. Oh, right, it okay, never it didn't work. All this right, is okay. really soft as well. This You could have this as a pet. Oh my God, it's just gorgeous. <laughs> Very soft, really soft. It's so soft. And every single day when I come into the shop, I pet this sweater. And this is made out of the far, and it's just so beautiful. Okay. It's like having a hug. Okay, come on, let's put it away. Let's move <laughs> okay, it away okay, from okay. you now. Come on, you've had too much exposure as well. <laughs> right, but it's right. very nice. Look it's at, so beautiful. Look at the knit on that. That's very nice. Isn't that beautiful? And then I have um, also in the wool folk, I have the Tov DK, just three of the colors. Again, absolutely gorgeous yarn, really That's beautiful. It's the perfect you know, it's perfect for sweaters. This is the nice. stuff that you want to use for something soft and luxurious. That's a little floppy. Um, <laughs> this is not so floppy. <laughs> and then I also carry snow, which um, it reminds me a little bit of, um, you know the string that you use to tie up packages at Christmas? Yes, I do. Like the, that kind of like yeah, two-tone red yeah, and white two -tone. stuff. Yeah, two-tone. This is um, two-tone, and um, it's really like this one's super nautical. Yeah. Navy and white. But the beautiful colors again, all eminently wearable. Close up. Okay. Look at that, that's nice. And again, this is super soft. This is fingering weight. I don't carry every single yarn that Wolfolk makes yet, um, but I, I I carry all of these, and I <laughs> I absolutely it's, really it's just wonderful. It's a beautiful yarn. Mm -hmm. The company is wonderful to work with. They're incredibly responsive. Uh, responsive. Don't they give money to uh, they make Ovis? Their profits? Yeah, they do, uh, they do like one percent. They give to a. Um, to the Ovis Foundation, I think it is. Uh -huh. um, I don't have my yeah wolf that just that's the price too. oh okay um it says <laughs> yeah they give says, i think one percent of their profits to the ovis foundation over 20 ovis 21 ultimate marina okay one percent of profit of wool yarn goes back to ovis 21 yeah which is a charitable organization yep. for sheep so um so that is kind of like my beautiful sweater quantity luxury yarn in bulky worsted DK and fingering weight and then the other yarn that I thought I would talk about today is kibasi. I often get people in the shop that have 
aversions um, or allergies to um, to wool or to animal products. Mm. Um, and this is just a wonderful alternative, which is at such an incredibly good price point. It's like $8 for uh, a hank and it's kobasi, but from um, Haiku. And it's a cotton, bamboo, silk, and nylon with a little bit of elastic, elastic Sorry nylon. Sorry about that. <laughs> Seamless cut. So um, yeah, this is perfect yarn uh, for knitted knockers. Um, uh, and uh, because it's really soft, it's great for chemo caps. It's great for um, preemie caps because it's so incredibly soft and you can throw this in the washing machine as well, which makes it really convenient. Um, it's it's just beautiful and it's lovely to work work with. So um, one of the first presents that I was given, um, one of I, uh, the regular, oh yeah, you wanna give it a, a good squish? Know. Is it squishable? Yeah. yeah what I, does. yeah, it's squishable for sure. All yarn is squishable. So um, I call her Sock Linda. She now lives in, uh, uh, Kuwait or Dubai? I was gonna say uh, in the gold country, but she moved from there to she, see. Well, she's, um, she, right now she's teaching at the moment. Oh, that's right. Yeah, so. Um, but I think she, she went to Dubai. Dubai. And um, she, she's a, a, a lovely person and, and a friend. We should know exactly she where she is. She made me great socks for my birthday. She did make you great socks for your so birthday. At the moment, working barefoot in the mornings, Linda, Sock Linda's socks. Yeah. Fantastic. She, Need to wash them though, I think. <laughs> she kind of exclusively does socks and she gives a lot of socks away. And she um, gave me a pair of socks in my favorite light pink color out of the Kobasi. And I was mopping the floors in the shop and I accidentally like mopped myself into a corner. And I, you know, I loved these socks so much that I didn't want to wear them. I, I used them as a sock, uh, shop sample. I mopped myself into a corner and I was like, oh shoot. And so I took my, sock, uh, my shoes off, I put the socks on. And unfortunately I ended up getting the socks totally filthy accidentally and I was like oh no I've ruined these beautiful socks mm. that you know I'm I completely that makes me like knit unworthy well I put them in a hot wash which of course you never do um, but I thought you know they're cotton bamboo they're silk they've got nylon they, they should be able to take it well I still the, three years later I wear them all the time I have um, well, I guess it's like two and a half years. I'm exaggerating a little bit, but I wear them all the time. I put them in the hot wash. I put them in the dryer. They're absolutely perfect. So this yarn <clears> is <throat> really, really durable as well. Yeah. So I love it. I recommend it all the time for people who have an aversion to, um, to wool or llama or mohair or, you know, there's a lot of people who have allergies out there. So I like to have some cotton alternatives for people. And also like when people are uh, making things for babies, sometimes they don't want to use wool, but mm. of course I'm a wool lover. I think everything should be made out of wool. Yeah, she touches up that sweater every I day. I do, I touch the sweater every day. Give it a little stroke. Sorry, I'm not jealous. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. So yeah. end of episode six, uh, next week will be episode seven. It will be episode seven. Wow, we've done seven weeks of this and yeah. we are no better at it. <laughs> I think, I think so it will get better all the time. Like I yes. said, these will be collector's editions because when, <laughs> when the shop opens again, it's gonna be a lot different, a lot of people. I think we should you know, do a tour of the shop one day. Yeah, I'm almost, I'm almost ready to do that. Yeah. I have a little bit um, more that I want to do to the shop before I'm ready to kind of really yeah, We're actually on one side it. of the shop. On the other side over there is the other side of the yeah. shop. Over There's there a back, is the, uh, which is where we have our like, classroom. Our and... green couch is right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And over our there. front door is there. That's why yeah. I keep looking because people, people keep, keep walking passing. past and looking at us. And it's, yeah. 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 And they're like, what? The and it's a beautiful day. Doing? I really want to go and see the ocean today. We should somehow. go have a little walk when we close the shop. Yeah, Let's put our do masks that. on That'll and be, go yeah. for it. I think glove so. Glove up. Gorgeous. Glove up, mask up. Yep. And then the, then, yeah, then it's dinner time. And that's when I edit the show and put it on YouTube. Yep. Very exciting moment. 
Thank, thank you, for you watching. all for watching. Thank you for watching episode six. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Are we going to wave? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. See you next week. Bye. See you next week. Be well. Look Bye. after yourselves. Yes. Bye. Stay safe. Bye. Stay safe.